their explanation is, is that when you eat certain foods, your uric acid is going to go up. And when the uric acid goes up, it's going to diffuse into, into the joints. I mean, this is the law of thermodynamics, actually. And I'm not arguing about that. It's true. Um, the uric acid in the circulatory system is going to diffuse into other organs and it's going to diffuse into the joints. Their argument is once it's in the joint, if the concentration of uric acid is high enough, then it's going to crystallize. And the crystallization, like having a splinter in your finger, is going to activate uh, the immune system. And there will be a gout flare in response to the crystallized uric acid. Th that narrative is false. We've got something around somewhere between 68 to 43 million, somewhere in that range of people walking around solely in the U.S. that are hyperuricemic and not expressing gout, not having gout flares. So that's the first clue that the fact that you can have high uric acid and not have a gout flare. And then when, when you look at what the mean concentration of uric acid is in a person who's having gout, it literally is uh, approximately uh, 8.3 mg per deciliter, which I know we're getting a little technical here, but that's the top of the reference range. It's not outside it. And when you talk to a doctor about this stuff, which I did in 2016, they're like, ah, well, your uric acid is high and that's why you're having a gout attack. And when you look at my medical records, my, my uric acid in the clinic that day was uh, because they did the blood analysis right there was 8.1 megs per deciliter. I literally was at the top of the reference range. I was not outside it. And then furthermore, there's two other issues here. A full 18% of gout sufferers uh, have uric acid levels that are between six and eight inside the range. And then there is a full 14% of sufferers who have uric acid concentrations that are under six, which by any argument is well within what, what the establishment considers the normal range. But I've had two gout flares since going onto the ketogenic diet. One of them was in the beginning. And I know the questions that you sent me, uh, we're going to address that issue. But when you go onto a ketogenic diet, and this is going to include carnivore, like if someone goes carnivore, today they're on the standard American diet, tomorrow they start car carnivore, they're going to see uh, an acute rise in uric acid in the circulatory system. And uh, the reason for that is because they're producing very rapidly, they're going to be producing ketones and uh, acetoacetate and beta hydroxybutyrate. Both of those are, are organic acids. And they're preferentially excreted by the kidneys. Relative to uric acid. So what that does is it backs the uric acid up because it can't get out by excretion. And you see this rise. And it's during that rise that gout sufferers can be vulnerable to a gout flare when they're doing this transition onto a ketogenic type of, of lifestyle. Now, over time, what happens is, is that with all of the profound changes that are going on, uh, the uric acid is eventually going to start to come down. But it was during that acute rise, I think I was at month four, where I had a gout, gout flare. It's important to mention that because I was on a ketogenic diet, and I believe because of the, the high beta hydroxybutyrate, which has been shown in the literature to inhibit the gout flare inflammatory process that the flare was mild. DrStatrust.com